Yeah, another, another big problem food is gluten, which I say the never that good and sometimes really awful Franken grain. Okay, so what's the deal with gluten? I mean, everybody's always talking about gluten. What's the problem? Okay, so gluten, it's, it's the protein found in wheat. Okay, it's a protein, and it's, and it's glue, it gluten, it's a glue. It's very hard to digest for number one, okay? Number two, we are inundated with it, okay? Because it's used as a binder, it's in everything, okay? It's in food we're eating, it's in cosmetics, it's just, it's, it, it is, we are inundated with it. Like back in the day, pretty much, do you answer patients who say that organic is not really? Okay, good question here. I'll take a moment here. So um, Dr. Karam said, how do you answer patients who say organic is not really organic? Maybe, maybe it is, okay, but it's the best we got, okay? It's the best we got at this time. So I think some of the concern is like, well, this says it's organic and it costs, you know, twice as much, why should I buy that? Because it's probably not even organic. There is some pretty stringent um, requirements that have to go through to be labeled as an organic product. Now, is all that's labeled organic has done gone through that? I don't know, I like to think so, maybe, maybe not, but either way, it's the best we got. It's the best we got at this time, all right? Making all the information to the public is the first step in changing it. Absolutely, Cheryl, thank you, yes, Information's power, like was a super friend said that? Knowledge is power, something like that. It is true. Um, I had a chance uh, to chat with um, one of the people here in the live audience and he was saying like, yeah, like, you know, so much of this, like I, I just assume some of the clients know. And that may or may not be the case. In fact, it probably is not the case. So how do they learn? How do they learn? Thank goodness for you, okay? So we are inundated with gluten, okay? It's in everything. Really, cosmetics and medication, vitamins, supplements. Okay, another number three, gluten is so hybridized that it no longer even resembles gluten the way it used to look even 50 years ago. It is said that there's a tenfold increase in the, in the stickiness, um, in the gluten content of wheat. It's been modified to produce more and more. So we're getting exposed to the stuff that's, that's really hard to digest that is exponentially more than it ever has been. Um, all right, and then the fourth one is uh, glyphosate, which is, again, chemicals. It is said that when, a lot of times, uh, crop, uh, as crops grow, they're sprayed down with pesticides so that it kills it on the vine, uh, not on the vine, but as it grows, so it dries, and then it's way more easier to harvest, okay? So what's the deal with gluten? Well, what it is is it's the stuff that's hard to digest that's been created that it's so much denser in content that we are inundated with that's probably laden with chemicals. That's the deal. A lot of problems being connected with the gluten and, and the brain. A lot of the, it's been said that a lot of the, um, um, the brain, uh, brain tissue is very much resembles that of gluten. So, so what happens if we're inundated by this nasty stuff is our body's like, man, what, what this protein molecule structure is so messing with me, I want to not have it in my body. And then you can start to recognize that other tissue that resembles that your body might start to rebel against, like some of the tissue in the brain. Where is gluten? It's everywhere. Or not. Meaning, again, you can make choices to not be exposed to gluten. It's, a, it's, it's a taking a, a new accountability and a new awareness to what we're eating, but you can avoid gluten. No, find out where it's at, avoid it. We we'll take a little little side step here about celiac disease. Okay, we have to talk about celiac disease. So th this is a it's a genetic autoimmune disorder to the gluten molecule, very different than a gluten allergy. I've seen and and so many doctors like when patients think they have an issue with gluten, like they'll go and the doctor will do like a celiac test. And I've had many clients that have had a celiac test that's negative. Their doctor tells them, well, you're not allergic to gluten, so go ahead and eat as much as you want. Hundred percent inaccurate, absolutely inaccurate. All celiac disease is an allergic reactivity to gluten, but not all allergies is celiac, okay? In fact, the majority are not. Celiac is a very specific type of reaction to the gluten molecule, okay? So really important to make this differentiation, okay? Um, one in, th let's take a look here. Uh, yeah, one in 133 people are been shown to have um, celiac, but definitely it's probably way more than that. In the past 50 years, there's been a 400% increase in the prevalence of celiac disease. Here, it's kind of estimated about um, basically 83% of Americans who have celiac disease, it's typically undiagnosed, and, and it is. 
uh, it's typically undiagnosed for years. And again, going back to, we were talking about autoimmune problems like celiac is the typical one. It is misdiagnosed for an average of 15 years. And here we talk about that. Yeah, it takes at least six to 10 years is the average time it takes a person to be accurately diagnosed. And that's changing. I mean, obviously gluten is a hot word. I mean, think about it like uh, 10 years ago, there wasn't any gluten-free food. You know, maybe Whole Foods had gluten-free food, right? Or like, you know, a natural store. Now, gluten-free foods everywhere. You can go almost any restaurant has gluten-free menu. Um, it, any grocery store now typically carries a lot of gluten-free food. Why? You know, people are like, well, it's just a fad. You know, yeah, everybody's like gluten-free, it's the cool thing. Well, maybe, but it's also a sign of the times saying something is going very wrong with us as a society. We are reacting to crap in ways that we never reacted to before.